Hi, my name is John Paul Lambert from Benchmark PDM, Canada's national easy laser distributor. In this video, I'm going to show you the best belt alignment tool on the market. Now, we call it belt alignment, but we're not actually aligning the belts. We're aligning the shivs or the pulleys that the belts are attached to. Now, it is a well-known fact that the major cause of premature or early belt failure is due to pulley misalignment. Now the tool that will guarantee you that this will not happen is the XT190 belt alignment tool. It is comprised of the laser transmitter and the digital detector. The laser transmitter generates a laser beam that is parallel to the reference shift. The detector reads the position in relation to the plane and displays the values in angular and offset. To align belts and pulleys, we need to know three different measurements. The angular misalignment in the horizontal plane, so that's 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock. The angular misalignment in the vertical plane, so that's 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. As well as the offset or parallel misalignment in the axial plane. To demonstrate how this laser alignment tool works, we will be using a simple demonstration stand with two shivs mounted. This side will be our stationary side as it's fixed, whereas this side will be our movable side or maybe the motor which would be sitting over here. We have little adjustment wheels so we can easily adjust to simulate a motor being moved. This of course does not demonstrate how the work is done in the field, but it will give you a good understanding of how the laser alignment tool works. We attach the laser transmitter to the stationary machine by clipping it on the side wall of the shiv with the magnetic pads. This is an advantage of our other systems that try and use V-Groove because they're normally worn. The side mount is also a larger area and this is important as it's the reference point that we will measure to. The laser beam which is transmitted is parallel to the shiv wall. The detector has four strong magnets that secure it to the shiv. We place this on the movable machine. It's a simple setup that fits on any size shift. With both units on, you get an instant lifetime reading of the misaligned results on the detector LED screen. This is a powerful option because you can very easily move your machine into alignment based on this lifetime value. However, with the belt alignment program, we can more efficiently use this tool. I can use the program with the free XT alignment app on my phone. I can use it on a tablet. Or of course, I can use it on the XT11 display unit. The choice is up to me. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to use the tablet so I can record the screen. When going into the belt alignment program, you can see right from the start that the alignment process is shown at the top of the screen with the icons. Currently we are in the distances page where I can input the distance between the machine's feet as well as some other certain data. The next icon shows the measurement icon. This is where I take my actual measurements. And finally, the documentation. That's where I can create a report. If I click the motor plus symbol, you can see that I can enter the shift width, which will automatically compensate for me if I'm working with mismatched shifts. I can also add the shift diameter, the tolerances, and the RPM. I will just put the most common RPM, which is 1725. To enter the distance between the machine's feet, I tap the area that says F1 to F2. F1 is the front foot, and F2 would be the back foot. There's actually not much adjustment on this demo rig. It is two inches, so I will just put two in and click close. Before I move on, I can tap the detector button to make sure I'm connected to the detector. And yes, it is connected. By tapping on the next measurement icon, you will see a lifetime result of the misalignment in a 3D image. I can move the screen around and look at it in a 3D image in different ways, but we prefer to use the grid view because it shows it in a nice way. Now we have the vertical plane on the left side of the screen which shows the angular misalignment as well as the shim that I need to correct at the bottom. So in the vertical plane it's telling me I need to put 10 thou of shim 
or 10 mils of shim in the back end of the motor. On the right side of the screen, I have the same thing in the horizontal plane. The angular on the top right is 0.27 degrees, and below is the amount of adjustment I need to make. More closer to the middle, I have a 22 thou of offset, or 22 mils of offset, in the axial plane. To make the corrections, I want to start adjusting the angular misalignment. I will start with the horizontal. If I start turning the knob, you can see that I'm moving it into alignment. I'll just move it past so you can see me going too far, and now I will come back. This is to show that we are moving the motor in a horizontal way and making sure that we are in the green, which is within tolerance based on the ones I put in. In the vertical plane, I will simulate putting 10 or 11 thou of shim under the back end of the motor by adjusting the wheel. Until I have zero. I would be happy at that point. And then finally, you can see we still have 19 thou of offset or axial misalignment. And with that, I will just push it in, and you can see I've already made it really quickly to zero, roughly zero. So I would be happy with those results. As you can see, I'm very close to zero all the, all the way around. I would tighten everything down. I would do a remeasure and make sure I've got repeatability. But after that, I would be happy and I could move on to my report section. As you can see, the logo and all the data that we've done is in there. We have the horizontal and vertical plane results, as well as any notes and information we added.